What is up everybody? Thank you so much for tuning in to another episode of Rocket Vlogs. My name is Braden Carlson and I know what you're thinking. That doesn't look like the rocket building garage that you're usually in and you're correct. This is my living room. Why? Because it is 107 degrees outside. Uh, so it's about 107 degrees in the uninsulated garage. We're not gonna let that stop us from doing rocket stuff today though. As you can see, I've got this tube fin rocket sitting in front of me. Now, in case you missed the last video about this thing, I've teamed up with Great Western Buildings to build a carbon fiber minimum diameter rocket that's flying on an N1000 with hopeful targets set on 50,000 feet. Clearly, this is not carbon fiber and you definitely can't fit an N1000 in it, but this is a one-to-one -one nose cone, pretty much the exact same nose cone with the exception of this is a pre-revision Wildman nose cone. They recently made some changes to make these withstand going fast uh, a lot better than they were. I've had this one for a while. This is a pre-revision nose cone, the Falcon 98. The kit that we're doing this all with has a new version, but I built this tube fin rocket to test the electronics setup. And that is going to be the topic of today's video. A bunch of people have asked what I plan to use for electronics on this thing. So we're gonna get into that today and that's going to be our primary focus. Then we're gonna come back and do another video on the recovery setup. The recovery setup is going to be a little bit complicated. All of it's going in the nose cone. It's only separating at one point. We're using cable cutters, and that will be a cool thing to get into when we get to it, but we have to get there first. But all of that recovery gear, of course, is a moot point if we don't have electronics to control it all. So we're gonna do that, but I have some buttoning up to do in here, uh, mostly just to glue the coupler in place. So that's what we're gonna start with. And uh, then we're gonna go from there. But uh, yeah, here's a uh, part two, I guess, of building a high performance test vehicle. Somebody or a few people uh, weren't too thrilled about calling it high performance with the tube fins. I didn't say this rocket was high performance. I called it a high performance rocket test vehicle, a high altitude rocket test vehicle. This is the test vehicle, right? The little Joe two didn't go to the moon, but it tested the capsule that did. Think of this as my tube fin little Joe. That's not what I'm gonna call it. It's had a couple different names. Keep it simple tube fin, tubey tester, I don't know. Leave your name suggestions in the comments, but uh, at any rate, let's, let's get to work. Yeah, this thing's so light. This camera angle is super weird. I know, I'm sorry. First thing I'm gonna do is just get this marked for where I can glue the coupler in. And I just wanted to pop in here real quick before I stand back up and say, make sure you always put your bulk plate on top of the coupler before you put it in your nose cone so that you can mark where your, uh, where your things are going to go. It does make a difference. Anyway, is it necessary to go all the way around? No. Is it necessary? See on this coupler how much material I had to remove to get it to fit in that phenolic. Is it a good thing this rocket's not going super fast? because we probably took a 16th of an inch off the total wall thickness there. We gotta make it happen, Cap. Sorry. We gotta make it happen, you know? I can still talk to you. You can't see me, but I'm seeing you. Oh, well, maybe you can hear the 3D printer. Let's see. Nice. Oh, intolerable. Here we go, let's brighten it up a little bit because it's sucking in all the window light. Hey, you see the shadow? There's no overhead light fixtures in this house. I think it's just a California thing. Everything is lamps. And all, all of these camera angles are going to do is show you how much of like a 20 year old dude house this is. There's like a drum set there, a racing simulator there. We don't have to get into all that. I'm gonna glue the coupler into the rocket's airframe and now I'm gonna pan the camera down so you can watch that happen. I don't know if you guys are familiar with the old PML tube lore that you have to put the arrows facing upward when you use PML phenolic or you'll have bad luck with the rocket. I don't buy into all that, so I alternated it on the tube fins. I started weighing out five minute epoxy when I use it. I like the precision. You guys know the drill. Okay, so now we're just gonna slide it in, but actually, 
when I did my three inch rocket, I uh, stopped just a little bit short so that when the rear closure inevitably couldn't go all the way on the motor case, I had a little bit of wiggle room to play with. So we're just gonna glue that in, boom. Bob's your uncle. While we're waiting for that epoxy to dry, let's have a little chat, okay? First of all, to everybody in America or just celebrates out of the country for whatever reason, if you happen to choose to do so, um, you know, do what you want. Happy 4th of July. It is so tragic to me that I'm in Southern California and can't play with a bunch of fireworks, but you know, it happens. That said, I'm probably posting this on the night of the 3rd, but maybe it'll go up on the 4th. I don't really know, but today is the very last day to purchase stickers so that you can get entered to win a $200 Wildman Rocketry gift card. Yes, $200. Think of, you could buy a K-Motor with that. But we have the APCP stickers, I'd rather be flying rockets. Of course, Nigel, the Rocket Cat, Just Keep Building Rockets, and the uh, debatable I Literally Burn Money stickers. <laughs> we still have a bunch of these in stock. Thank you to everybody who has bought them so far. You have until 11.59 p.m. Pacific on July 4th to buy these and have them count for entries to win the gift card. Every sticker you buy is an entry, so if you buy 10, you get 10 chances to win the gift card. Uh, you can check out rocketvlogs.square.site to purchase them, check out the contest rules and all of that. Just to sweeten the deal for those of you guys who are crafty consumers and have waited till the very end to purchase them, I'm gonna throw in some big oversized Nigel stickers and a couple of holographic Nigel stickers randomly as we're packing up orders. So rocketvlogs.square.site, the stickers are $6 a piece or one of the mix and match packs that comes with one of each is $25. If you're a Patreon member or a channel member, there is a discount code. You can only find that by being a Patreon member or a channel member. You can also buy five packs of individual stickers and 10 packs and whatever else you're feeling. But remember, every single one is an entry to win the $200 gift card. We've got epoxy cooking and it should be done about now. So let's move on to the electronics portion. Did I mention the 3D printer was running? I'm gonna send it over to voice over me now. I sort of dictated the design concept to Shane and he executed it and brought it into reality for me. Unfortunately, I didn't really specify that the test rocket coupler is a bit shorter than the one that I'll be on the actual end rocket. So I had to shave it down a bit and that's why one side is a little funny shaped. One of the very first stipulations for this project from Great Western Buildings is that it needed to have onboard footage. So there's a hole in the bottom of our sled assembly here that fits the Mobius Maxi 4K video camera so we can have some onboard footage. Of course, a corresponding hole in the coupler and airframe will be integrated. Let's go over and install the electronics that we'll be using for this thing. It's no secret I've become a big featherweight fan in recent times, so first up is a Blue Raven with the Power Perch, and if you're not familiar with the Power Perch, it basically gives you standard terminal blocks and integrates both a magnet switch and battery all into one incredibly tiny little package. The Blue Raven can do a ton of cool stuff like staging, air starts, tilt lockout, safety stuff like that, and it takes up such a little amount of space. Super cool. Of course, we're going back to featherweight here and installing the GPS transmitter. I can't say enough good things about the functionality of this thing. Um, I'll still be flying an RDF transmitter as a backup on the end motor flight, but I'm pretty confident that the featherweight GPS is gonna lead us right to the thing. It's very simple and everything just works so far in my experience. But one thing that's worth noting about the GPS setup in here is the careful planning and placement that's sort of required for this GPS transmitter's antenna. The final integration of this sled might see the GPS transmitter getting moved up a bit because the airframe of the rocket is carbon fiber and carbon fiber is not RF transparent. So we need to make sure the antenna is sticking up beyond the edge of the carbon tube and pointed through our nice transmission friendly fiberglass parts. And if you're familiar with the Wildman Falcon 98, you will know that it does indeed have a carbon fiber coupler, but we will not be using that for this very reason. Next up, in keeping with the theme of tiny electronics, I got this Altus Metrum Easy Mini. I've seen a bunch of friends fly them recently and decided to give it a shot. I'll be powering it with the same Palm Beach Bots 2S LiPo that was on board my M1675 minimum diameter project. And that's pretty much it. That's the whole assembly. Uh, four inch rockets now feel giant and I cannot believe how much extra room. You could fit like three more altimeters on here if you really wanted to. But uh, there you go. That's the electronics setup.
Well, that's pretty much going to do it for this episode. Uh, I actually just got a notification that my package got delivered for the motor mount assembly. I decided to go 75 with this. We still have a couple little things to do this rocket, like put rail buttons on it. But so far, it's looking like everything's coming together pretty nicely. Look at that fitment, man. Oh, it's so good. Shout out Postart for the design. If you, uh, if you want a custom design sled fin guides or something like that, uh, send an email to chsigndesign at gmail.com and Postart can make you something awesome too. Thank you guys so much for tuning in to another Rocky Vlogs episode. I know this one was short. Like I said, it's just really hot and I'm not motivated to do anything. So uh, I'm probably gonna go to the car wash and go grab some food and call it an evening and just hang out for a while. Don't forget the 4th of July is the very last day that you can buy stickers to be entered to win the Wildman $200 gift certificate. You can check it out at rocketvlogs.square.site. As usual, a big thank you to my channel members and Patreon supporters whose names are scrolling across the screen right now. My name is Braden Carlson. You just watched a Rocket Vlogs video and I will see you on a day where it's not 115 degrees in my garage.